Hello and welcome to this video on Cisco Wireless. In this video, I'd like to show you how to use the Cisco Access Point Universal SKU and Cisco Air Provision to dynamically provision the country to your access point. The logic of the Universal SKU is that you do not need to buy a localized access point. You can buy a universal access point and provision the country dynamically from the other access points around or from your controller. When a universal access point boots up, it looks into its configuration to check if the country has been provisioned. If it hasn't, it's going to listen to the air and check if other access points around may have country information to provide. If they do, then the AP is going to dynamically get its own access point country code value from the neighboring access point. If no access point around can provision country information, then the access point is going to join the controller and wait for you to dynamically provision the country. So to provision a country dynamically, you have two choices. The first one is first configure an access point and then boot up the other access points in the same neighborhood to dynamically provision the country via NDP over the air. Or let your access point join a controller and use a cell phone to dynamically provision the country to the access point. So the way this works is that an access point out of the box using the universal SKU is going to join a controller using CapWap as usual. But it's only going to broadcast an SSID on the 2.4 GHz band, not on the 5 GB, and at low power, a power that is acceptable in every country. Then you will need to use a cell phone to connect via any mean to the Cisco network using the Cisco Air Provision application authenticate to the Cisco network to validate your identity and once this is done your cell phone also needs a cellular connection to the network because the cell tower is going to send to your phone an identifier which is a cell tower identifier that mentions the country. This allows the system to know in which country your phone is set. Then your phone will scan the wireless SSIDs, detect the universal SKU access point and then connect to it as a wireless client. Get automatically an IP address using active IP snooping. And then once authenticated to the access point, the phone will send the country information through the access point to the controller. And then the access point will be provisioned dynamically with the regulatory domain. From that point on, your access point is primed and ready to use and is going to send NDP neighbor discovery protocol messages out of its radio so that neighboring access points using the universal SKU and not primed yet can learn the country information from that first access point. One key item of this process, of course, is the connection to the cell tower. Each cell tower sends what we call the MCC and MNC information, which is basically the mobile network code and the country code, as you can see in the screenshot here. We need this information so that we know in which country you are and so that we can provision that country code to the access point. So it does not mean that you have to have data connection, but it means that you do have to be in range of a cell tower so that you can receive this country code and mobile network code information from the cell tower. You also need to connect to CCO to be authenticated and run the application, but this can be done over the wireless network. It doesn't need to be done over the cellular network. When booting your access point, of course, its SKU is UX, and the AP can run an autonomous code or a CapWeb code indifferently. My controller is set to US, but any country could work. As the AP boot, uh, as it is in CapWeb mode, it's going to try to discover a controller and will join that controller. When I look at the controller configuration, I see configuration events sent to the access point, and basically the AP seems to join just like any other CapWeb access point. But if I look at the exchange, I can see that because the AP is universal UX, then the country code that is set to the AP is also UX universal because the AP is not primed yet. And this is although my country on my controller is set to US, but it doesn't matter because the AP is not primed yet. So when I look at the AP configuration in detail, I can see that the AP is unprimed. And although my country code is US on the controller, the AP itself is set to UX universal. I can see the same information in the graphical interface. When I click the access point name and go to inventory, I see that the AP model is UX. And in the advanced tab, I see that the AP is unprimed and the country code is also UX, even if my controller code itself is US. 
The AP seems to be up on channel 36 and channel 1, so both 2.4 and 5 GHz radios seem to be up. But this is for listen only, because the AP is going to broadcast the SSID's configured on the controller, but only on the 2.4 GHz band. So you see my access point MAC address is B640. And my SSIDs, there is a public Wi-Fi SSID which is enabled, the other are disabled. So on the 2.4 GHz band, I do see that public Wi-Fi is broadcasted. And the MAC address is B642, which is derived from my access point B640 MAC address. Channel is 1, rate is 1 megabit per second. This is a classical beacon, and it matches my access point channel, of course. But on the 5 GHz channel, although my AP is in channel 36, if I set my Wireshark into channel 36 and try to scan, I do not see any broadcast coming from my access point MAC address. And this is because the 5 GHz band is not the same in every country of the world, which means that as long as the access point is in universal mode, it's going to broadcast the SSID on the 2.4 band, which is accepted worldwide, but at low power, so that we don't infringe with any regulations, but not on 5 GHz. Now on my phone, I need to install the eStore application. For that, I need to allow installation from unknown sources, then also allow debugging from USB. Then I go to the URL provided here and download the eStore application. It's a classical installation process. Download, click Next, install the app. The app itself is a container once the app eStore is installed. Open the app and that will require you to connect to the Cisco web server. CCO. You need to use a Cisco account. Once connected there, you see the list of all applications that can be contained into the eStore, and the one you're looking for is Cisco Air Provision. Install this app just like you install eStore by clicking it, clicking install, etc. Once the app is installed, open it, and you'll need to have GPS enabled to use the app. So you have to have both a cellular connection and GPS services because the location is going to rely not only on your GPS information, but also on the information returned from the cellular tower. So make sure you have both cellular connection and GPS enabled. Then log in using your Cisco account. The app is going to scan and try to detect the SSIDs around, including the one coming from your universal SKU access point. You should recognize it by the MAC address from the access point and of course the SSID. For this to work, your SSID needs to have two parameters, beyond of course being enabled. The first one is to have the universal admin value clicked, but this is going to be only valid if you also set the second parameter, which is set security to WPA, WPAV2. So this can be .1x or pre-shared key. Here in this example, I'm going to use a basic pre-shared key with WPAV2. Once this is enabled, I can go back to the Advanced tab and enable the Universal Admin checkbox. This allows the access point to broadcast this SSID and use this SSID for dynamic provisioning. This is a nice security mechanism. If you don't want to provision the access point, uncheck this box in all your SSIDs and no provisioning will happen. Then you can connect to the SSID here using a pre-shared key WPAV2 password. And once this is done, the next phase is to connect to the access point itself. You connect to the AP using the telnet slash SSH credentials to the access point. By default, it's Cisco, Cisco with a capital C. Here, I'm using the different credentials pushed from my controller for all my access points. And then you can click the configure button. You see that the AP is not provisioned yet and the regulatory domain is UX everywhere. Click configure and the AP is going to use the information fed from your phone to set the right country code connecting through the controller and then the AP is going to reboot. Once the AP has rebooted and joined the controller again, if I do show AP summary, you can see now that my AP is set to the US country. On my graphical interface, logic is the same. It's a universal AP, still UX in its SKU of course, but the country code is now set to US and priming was done using the web app application. If I connect to the access point now, using the same Air Provision app, there is no configuration button available anymore, but you can see that my regulatory domain was provisioned properly to the A regulatory domain. Once that first AP is provisioned, 
any other UX AP that you plug in the same neighborhood can receive the same information using NDP, Neighbor Discovery Protocol. So when the AP boots and join the controller, my second AP here is 3602A, it's still UX, and because the other access point is already provisioned, it's going to send the right NDP value. And my second AP is going to hear that value, is going to get its country provision automatically, and after a few minutes, you should see that second AP reboot, rejoin the controller, but this time, provision properly with the right country code using NDP. By the way, the process would be the same on the autonomous access points. In your SSIDs, you can set the universal admin mode, and you also have to set a security to low PA, low PAV2. And once the AP is provisioned properly, the carrier set will be set to whatever country you configured. The only difference between the autonomous AP and the CAPWAP AP is that you have to provision the autonomous APs one by one, and that, of course, the country code list is stored inside the access point instead of being stored inside the controller. I hope this was useful for you, and I would like to thank you for watching.